Can you it's hear okay. us? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I can hear. How are you doing? I'm good. Just let me make it a little bigger here. All right. What I was doing, I was trying to send a mic some other links, but I guess he got what he needed. <laughs> hey, brother. You see? Pretty, how's it going? Pretty good. good. Have you guys recovered? Are you still yeah. acting? Are you still acting like teenagers? <laughs> We're still acting like teenagers. No. We still got like four minutes. I'm gonna put a. I'm gonna put a video on. Take up that time. I already, I'm, we're already, I'm gonna go grab another light real quick. So. We're already okay. We're already live on Facebook, but I'm gonna take you off the screen. Oh, okay. I'm gonna take you off the screen and mute you, so you don't say anything bad. <laughs> Give it sound. Got a little soul speak on the ascension that we all share. This unveiling, this apocalypse. You know, all this uh, discussion of what is reality. Conspiracy. Heresy. Truth that's stranger than fiction. Doesn't get any better than this. It's not just time to bring on the apocalypse, it's time to start riding it. It's not going to hurt us. Because one thing's for sure, in our conscious mind and even in our subconscious, if that's what you want to call it, we have always survived. And the reason for that is, is because we never die. So when it comes to ascension, what else is there to talk about? This ascension, unveiling is not complicated it's just a microcosm of the state of our being from any point from this present moment to any point in our past and in regard to the past now we can look back to see to awaken without the element of linear time yeah because the wisdom still comes because the universe is never late that means we can take from our past the powerful wisdom of the eternal moments seen when we unveil the hurts and the blame given and received. You know, we've reached a point where forgiveness will cease to exist because perfection did not create forgiveness but is a path to a higher perfection, a new reflection of itself, of ourselves. Yeah, it's true. It's just not necessary forgiveness and neither is earth love so we can stop chasing both right now and all the false securities and failed searches that go with the lofty goals of a moral world both the things that they put beyond our reach and the reasons they gave us for not being able to reach them it's time to re-enter the fold the fold of the immortal, the fold of the I am soul. sir how's it going pretty Oops. good <laughs> all right let me get my shift together
Can you get your shit together? Yes. Hello, everybody. Got 26 people in the house. If these shows resonate with you, please share so we can say about the algorithms of Facebook, especially with all this crazy energy going down. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go down the list, but we appreciate everybody's love and support contributions. Allow us to keep doing this every day by the seat of our pants. And, uh, good to have uh, our dear friends here, Nancy, Joe, and John, who uh, just recently left Hawaii. <laughs> It's so um, nice to meet you. And from their honeymoon. Yeah. yeah. We enjoyed we enjoyed it a lot. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It really was. So you guys have been back, what, a week now? Week and a half? Yeah. Yeah, it's, about a week. It's getting hard to count the days. Right? There's What's, summers going by so fast. I mean, su you know? Summer time, the moment. Yeah. Like all, it's all dwarfing into just one solitary moment all the time. <laughs> so what's it been like for y'all uh, the last uh, few days? See, when you must have got back, what, today's the 6th? Oh, well, we got back that Sunday. Sunday. It was an all-nighter, yeah. red-eye. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah I, bet, I bet that took a while to recover from. Yeah. We, yeah, we laid down. <laughs> <laughs> Since we got home, we got in bed. <laughs> and, and so there was a, uh, what was this thing going on? There was a, was it, what was it? Uh, Eclipse. Tuesday. It was a full Tuesday. solar. Oh, was an eclipse. A new on moon August. and an eclipse on, the on Tuesday. Yeah, the second and the third, and then the fourth of July, which carried a lot of uh, had an earth uh, that earthquake, and had another one on Friday. Yes. Uh, actually, I read today they had fourteen hundred of them. They're having one every minute, one tremor. One tremor. North, yeah, California. Wow. Yeah. Worlds yeah. Worlds yeah. Bomb part coming loose. I think, I think there's a lot of purging, a lot of purging going on. How about for y'all? Have you had a uh, have you had a, a lift since you came back from Hawaii? Well, he had he had some things going on with his truck a lot, mm. and I had some things going on with my family. Mine is always relationships. His is his business. Yeah, <laughs> Karma and her husband Murphy <laughs> had a way with me, but things What's are that? rolling. Yeah. What, what was that about Murphy? Well, like Murphy is married to Karma. I think that's his wife. <laughs> Murphy's oh, Law. Oh, Mother. Murphy's Law. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought you were referring to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they got off my back finally. But, you know, we figured that everything's my family. I have things that are happening. There are some personal stuff, but um, I think it brought us more together, right? So um, that was good. We're trying to find the good in it and uh, dealing with all of that. And the family thing? my family yes yeah 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 that's always a that's always a good way to uh test your faith and yes find but, a little bit find well, a little bit more of your soul it was uh well we came in this life with them right we chose our parents we chose our children um our children chose us it's it's uh you know our brothers our whole family you know but and even though you might not feel like you belong on this planet sometimes and that this was a mistake, <laughs> but uh, you kind of grow to love them, you know? <laughs> well, if you, if, you can start, if you can start there, then the rest of them are easy. Yes. Yeah, I was looking for the mothership. I was hoping they were coming back, <laughs> coming back for me, you know? Oh, yeah? I think a lot of people have been wanting that in the last few days. <laughs> Beam me up, damn it. <laughs> I don't want to work today. <laughs> yeah. And you're coming off the heels of getting married in a honeymoon. Yes. And discovering this new energy, Harry Oskamas, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's some stuff, man. But it's not, I've decided that John and I are, we're discussing that a lot. And we decided that um, to get used to that energy, um, we're starting to use Qigong and connecting to plant, you know, trees, <laughs> and then learning how to, well, at least that's what it is for me, and then getting familiar with that energy, and then learning how to also flow with that other energy through another person, because I felt that energy with other people, and I know I'm very respectful of that energy, and I think you can decide intentionally what kind of gifts you want from that person and um i think that i want to be more not so much in control but 
uh, aware of what it is that I am I'm wanting out of this whole experience. The Harry the Harry Uh huh. Yeah. Well, we're working on that and uh, kind of like uh, starting a relationship again, like we never, you know, didn't you know had any relationship before, <laughs> and just kind of like going at it to where it's just real tender and new and fresh. And it's just like when you totally limit yourself from the physical expression, it seems like the littlest piece of tenderness that you share is just like way more magnified. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty neat. I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going through that. We're, we're, we're sticking to our guns on it. You know, he wins my heart in a lot of different ways. So, and just today, some of the things he did with his, with my family, um, that really, uh, really touched my heart and how he, how he is with them. And I, I love that, you know, he knows where, he knows what's important to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So that, that intimacy, the Harold Scowens is an intimacy. I mean, it's, the, I guess, the yeah, even if it's just whatever, just, just the slightest touch or the, yeah. the slightest expression is way more magnified when you don't throw all the other stuff in and take it, take it for granted. You know what I mean? It just has a lot more fire to it if you go real slow with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I kind of feel that uh, look, for a woman, I don't know. I think with with me anyway, I think John loves touch and he loves he loves to be touched. And he likes that physical uh, uh, me holding him or caressing his shoulders. Well, that's the man thing, right? He's okay. I don't I, know. I don't know anything. <laughs> I, don't know anything. I don't know anything. I have no idea. You don't know what you want. <laughs> what I? <laughs> yeah, you do. you do. I think it's. I think it's a moment by moment thing. I don't. I don't know. Keep going though. I want to hear this. I feel as a woman through my experience. Okay, not that everybody else has the same experience. Um, yeah. I think through my experience, I think that I want. I want an intimacy. But it's not always a physical intimacy. I want the I want to get to know you better. I want to know what pleases you to make you uh, smile, to make you joyful. And John knows how to do that. And um, he was a total. He was a blessing to me in my life. And um, because I guess back then, you know, I was celibate for nine years before I met John and you know I was in need of touch as well but I there were other things that were more important to me you know that 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 I needed is that I was having to provide for myself okay and John was a, he talks a lot <laughs> but he's also a good listener and uh except for on video live <laughs> you can do both it is possible <laughs> and i think that i was lucky that he was he was open to hear me out before we got intimate or anything and i definitely delayed it as long as i that i felt was appropriate at the time and um and then uh an hour we're married and um, but he he wants to feel that that energy. I felt it when I was with him that day on the on the on the bridge. Yeah, our first day together. Okay, and um, because I kind of always felt energy in a way. I don't know why, but maybe because I was celibate, and maybe because I was I couldn't have that energy exchange in any other way yeah and, um so so i was careful <laughs> with uh but anyway i knew that on that day on 
on the on the bridge. Yeah, we both felt something. I felt it in my heart chakra and yes. my lower two chakras. It's just like a and I felt like a like a hum and a vibration. Like I've never I've never yeah. experienced. When, when was this? When we first met. For our first date. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your first date. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we felt like an energy exchange and mm -hmm. like call it butterflies or whatever. I've never experienced that in my life before. Yeah, and and that was when very magical. I felt it in my chest area. Uh, mainly the nipples areas, and then, uh, and then I kind of knew. I thought it at then at that time it was. Uh, I thought it was just oh we have a chemistry you know like mm -hmm. we have this chemistry and that was the feeling that I wanted because I knew that that was a sign to me that yeah I'm gonna have a good connection with him yeah um, that made me feel really good. And that was what I decided that night. Well, I, you know, if we see each other again, that would be great. So, and, and sure enough, he called and we made arrangements to uh, see each other again. So. And so that was two and a half years ago, three years ago? Four yeah, years ago. Four years ago. Four years ago. Well, over four years. Mm -hmm. So then you, then you uh, come on your honeymoon to Kauai and <laughs> <laughs> decide to slow yeah. it down. Well, John wants to experiment. We met a couple of transcendental uh, hippies there on the island <laughs> in Oregon and had a blast. It was wonderful. So, I mean, but I think it's, uh, it's interesting, though, uh, coming the direction you're coming from, because obviously you both felt the non-physical energy. Mm -hmm. in the yeah, physical was, body and then amazing. now you now you're floated down and finding uh, that energy kind of can be fused with the physical touch you know so mm -hmm. stuff like that i mean the intimacy feeds you know all parts of the relationship potentially yeah. mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a consistent or a constant intimacy mm -hmm can be a constant intimacy. Yeah. Yes. And I want to have, and I think that it, the energy makes you a little more, more, uh, it makes it a stronger bond, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and it's like, because uh, you're operating on this mind that doesn't really speak words, and then you're your mind that does speak words with the part of your mind, your brain, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of like communicate it uh, both verbally and, and in silence. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want that nonverbal communication to where there's just the chemistry and you know what to do and what not to do and how to, you just, thoughts and feelings just kind of like merge naturally and mm -hmm. it's just nice. Mm -hmm. So we're going to. Do what? We're gonna give it a go <laughs> again. I don't. I'm not, I'm not sure everybody knows what you're doing. <laughs> and I don't want to. I don't want to no, say. We're looking, we got three books. We got one on the Kundalini. We got one on sexual mudras, and we got another one on uh, Eros Gamos, but it's uh, by a different author. No, no, um, no. You got the one on uh, divine Mary, union. Divine Some union. divine union. Mary, divine union. Mary, Mary, Mary Magdalene channeled it. Oh. I think somebody was talking about that uh, the other day. That sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, really yeah it's, uh, it's a heck of a book. I ain't got too far into it yet. And from what I understand is that uh, the divine union first is with your, your higher self. Right. Okay? And even just marrying yourself. And I remember before I met John, I wanted, I wanted to put on a marry myself. So I bought myself a little diamond ring when I was working four jobs uh, and I decided I was going to marry myself and and I did that at my home one night and just said Nancy do you take this <laughs> you know I said the little vows to myself oh yes and I repeated yes and for richer for poor whatever you know I just said all those you, little vows you were marrying your higher self and didn't yeah. even realize it maybe at the time well at that time I just felt that I needed to do it yeah and uh, there's this Greek, I guess uh, Harry Scamus is Greek. Um, it's old 
but I think that uh, if you first, and I would say my little affirmations in the morning about um, that, that I respect you, I appreciate you, that you, you know, just looking at yourself in the eyes and giving yourself some praise about something you did good, you know, or, you know, uh, just finding something good about yourself instead of finding something bad all the time, you know, and just say, and that was one of my things. And then I kind of attracted all this Bob Proctor stuff. And mm -hmm. we, we took a couple of classes, John and I, when we met, um, we decided we'd take some Bob Proctor. Uh, personal growth type of. Personal growth kind of stuff. Thanks. We went to New York and uh, did that. And, cool. uh, and it really helped me, I think, at, at work, with me at work. And uh, my, my boss took notice and praised me. And I thought, oh, wow, this is, really does work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's so. been around for years. Yeah. <laughs> it is something else. We went to his tribute, his uh, life tribute at the, uh, what was it, Carnegie Hall? Carnegie Hall. I don't like New York. Yeah. I'm not a city person. Yeah. Yeah, I got to be in the woods or the suburbs or something or, or in the jungles of Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. So, so do you, uh, do you guys like take time to, I mean, take time alone uh, to communicate or commune or meditate and I mean, also he's, you, he's away all the time. We try to. Oh, yeah. On weekends, Friday, intention. Saturday, and Sunday. We also make intentions then before we go to bed, right? Mm hmm. And we said, we're going to see each other in our dreams. And I did. One night I did. I saw him in my dream. You know, leave that, make, make that intention. Sometimes we just shoot energy at each other's hearts while we're talking, before we go to bed at night. Well, he's got to be stopped. Yeah, I, got, I got a part. <laughs> I'm a Reiki master, so I just tell her to do the intentions. I just shoot a, a beam through he, the atmosphere. He asked me. And then it hits her in the heart, and then she shoots one at me. And you create it if you do it. I mean, there's nothing you can't do. Yeah. You can shoot one from here to the other side of the universe. Yeah. Very you true. just don't realize their power. Yeah. That's very true. And you can actually feel it when we connected like that. You, we could act, I, my crown chakra was buzzing and tickling and mm -hmm. felt in the palms of my hands. We joined from, we were a thousand miles apart. Yeah, and I felt too that when, like when I stand in front of a tree and I scoop up the the energy from the earth and I scoop it all the way into the, and I feel the tree, you know, the energy, I feel it tingling. Yeah. And bring it, you bring it down into your, to that, that one uh, light that comes to your chi light, right? Yeah, chi. To your head and to your kidney and your stomach. And you bring all that. And I've really felt that too. And that was very nice feeling too. I mean, that was, well, we're just energy beings living in a yeah. pile of flesh, you know? We're not really what we think we are. And that's Qigong. And I'm, you know what? When I felt that, I decided I'm a, I'm a student. <laughs> I'm going to go take more classes on it. So how did you guys incorporate the Qigong into uh, the trajectory of, you know, uh, higher levels of periosconomy? It's energy, right? It's just raising the energy levels. It's ramping up the energy. So yeah. matter, I just, think that you can burn yourself out too sometimes. Right? You were saying you read that. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. got to be careful with energy. Yeah. But I think it's got to balance. I mean, it goes where it needs to go, I imagine. And, uh, I think you can only do like 15 minutes of it. Qigong? Yeah, of any of it. Any of the energy that you're dealing with, right? 10, 15 minutes of it. Yeah. Well, they do it for 30 minutes, but to feel that all the time you can really burn yourself out. i don't know i don't 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 take my word for it okay yeah more about it yeah i don't either just one thing becomes a uh you know like a a given and then it changes yeah yeah it's, it's all the same energies we just call it different names from different traditions you know yeah so so have you have you had any uh, either either one of you had any uh, you know evidence of like third eye expansion or dimensional experiences or uh, visions or lucid dreams that type of thing? 
I've been having more dreams since we started this. I've been dreaming of really crazy stuff, but then, uh, you know, John interprets them a lot better for, he interprets my dreams for me. Yeah. He does a good job. And um, uh, I just, it's been, some of them are pretty crazy. And now I'm gonna go to bed saying, well, now I need interpretations, which I can understand. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it would be nice if the universe made things a little clearer sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it speaks to us in symbols and everything. And yeah. Yeah, that's how I was last night when I went to bed. I said, Could you please speak to me a little bit clearer in plain English? <laughs> <laughs> Did that, that work? Be, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do I've done it plenty of times. It's just like sometimes it works. It's, it's like it's a language of its own. Right? Yeah. Well, the higher self the, well, you could, and whatever dogma or tradition you want to call it, you know, you some people call it the uh, quantum field, the divine self, the higher self. I, you know, for my old tradition, I call it the Holy Spirit, the divine spirit. Yeah. It's it's all the same thing, and it's we have to learn. It's what we're made of, and we have to learn to create with it and learn from it and let it nurture us and help us grow and become more sensitive, loving, beautiful beings. On you know, to each other and yeah, it's a lot of give and take, right? Takes a lot of con takes conscious effort in uh, conversation too. I mean, you if you're not aware of something, you can't be aware of something. Sometimes somebody has to point it out to you. Yeah. But I mean, th these last few days, the energy's been particularly uh, intense. People have been writing about it, yeah. talking about it, about the energy the last few days. Okay. This first few days of July. How's that? How's that affected y'all? Have y'all felt it at all? Or are you still on your honeymoon? Yeah. <laughs> um, with, with my family, yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. I love I love my family. Don't ever, but yes. But you know, I feel that it works with the I think you gotta understand where it's working with you, or you got I guess you gotta be aware of where it's because I know his is financial, mine is always with relationships. Mm. And he seems to be hit with it all at once, isn't it? Or do you think so? With your truck, anyway. Well, yeah, my truck's my livelihood. Uh -huh. So. And I get hit with it with my family and it, emotions, and then uh, trying to understand all that, and trying and trying to say, okay, what's going on, and then uh, trying to say, you know, you're, I'm working through some of that the, that relationship, uh, that relationship stuff, and. Um, you know, and then all of a sudden I had this feeling of energy coming to me this week when I started doing that Qigong stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, but it felt really good. So I, I love that part of it. And, you know, and I used to do uh, this Kundalini stuff, but that, like I was telling you, that Kundalini energy, I can only, you can only do that for so long or you can burn out different chakras different chakras in your body and you need to be careful with that i think you know i don't know if it'll burn your chakras out but it'll sure uh so, cause a lot of trauma on you if you're not ready for the force of it because mm -hmm. i feel that i burnt out parts because i didn't have a partner and uh, so i felt that i burnt out a little bit but i'm doing better now well yeah. Well, you got a partner now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't seen any dragons since I've been back. <laughs> did you see any dragons here? That's all I've been seeing. For the yeah, last I did days. that one night. My third eye was not normally not that wide open. Oh, that night. <laughs> what? That I said night. I forgot about that night. <laughs> yeah, my third eye was wide open, and uh, it's like every time I shut my eyes, I seen something. Yeah. That wasn't of this world. It was pretty neat. And Morgan and you are so wonderful. Thank you for having us over. Absolutely. We enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, and immensely. It's been very adventurous and little journeys <laughs> through the backwoods of Hawaii. It was really nice getting to know both of you and being on the beach and yeah. Yeah. And meeting some of your friends and neighbors and stuff. So. Yeah, it's very cool. No doubt about it. Very cool. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm, I, I forgot about the dragon thing. Yeah, I uh, I've been seeing them uh, 
well, off and on, you know, for a while, but these last few days I've been seeing a lot. Like, leading up to the first of the month and after the, even today, I went outside today by myself and basically saw three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's one, there's two, there's three. But now, do you hear anything when they're there? Sometimes. Um, not, not today. Uh, I think today was more of a synchronicity or validation. Mm -hmm. I've been getting a lot of that. Um, I'd say the last uh, five or six days, as the energies have been coming in and, you know, uh, uh, the smoke's flying, I get, I've been getting a lot of synchronicities, <clears throat> a lot of tones. You know, the tones I'm hearing, I'm, I'm starting to really get a grip on the tones, the tones, um, what's being said, and sometimes who's saying it. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's off the subject of Harry Scalmas. <laughs> I get the tones all the time. I've been having them for years. I thought there was, I thought it was uh, tinnitus, but I kind of figured it wasn't. It was, I think it just sounds from the other realms. Sometimes it's musical instruments coming through. Yeah. Because yeah. like your third, you, you know, you have like a, like your third eye, you have the same thing with your ears. It can, yeah. when you're in tune spiritually, you can hear the other realms. Yeah. I hear, I hear songs sometimes, songs I've never heard here. Um, well, that's neat. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. Would it be like the 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 love, you know, the five twenty eight hertz kind of sound? I'm not really sure. I I think that's a frequency or the the uh, four thirty four or four whatever it is, and then the five twenty eight and the different ones. That's a, that's a frequency the sounds produced at. I don't really know that much about it. I just know you know you watch a video and they'll say it's in five twenty eight or. Or that that type of thing. Yeah. What I usually hear is like three or four different styles, and they're not like rock and roll or country or classical. They're just this kind of I don't even know, kind of like a multi electronic mm -hmm. kind of thing with some voices in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, but these tones lately, I've, I've, I, as time's gone on, because I've been getting them since around the time I met Morgan, so about almost four years ago. But uh, uh, I can hear even the last two, three days, very clearly, like messages coming in with them, mm -hmm. which are again, kind of a synchronicity validation. Mm -hmm. Just hold the, space. hold the space, you're, you're all right, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Let the dust settle, you know, kind of thing. There's a lot of energy. I mean, I, all you gotta do is open up the news feed and just go down it and a lot of credible people writing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, they really are. Well, what I always hear, and I've told John this before, that I hear like flute music, like a low flute tone, like a, you know, like yeah, like and pretty it was flute. beautiful, like yeah. flute, and um, and it's just absolutely beautiful, and yeah. it's, and I think it's the divine. <laughs> what the well, flute is from the the main sound, like from the fifth dimension. So it's, yeah. it's a predominant sound, like up there. Like the astral realm is more like uh, the humming of bees. It like it sounds like a beehive or mm -hmm. lightning and thunder. Yeah, different realms and have the different when sounds. When we kissed, that time we kissed, remember, we had lightning outside. The it, it started to rain and there was thunder. And John, that's for real. That stuff is for real. Yeah, it was like yeah, because it was clear, and all of a sudden, and it started to rain. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it was pretty cool. And we heard an owl, didn't we? Oh, that's part. Yeah. Yeah, have like different little unique things happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are those are real. They really are. And then I think they're becoming more um, evident, mm -hmm. non coincidental, mm -hmm. in these in these these this year. You know, as this year's gone on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's like we're 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 in that fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're Maybe. trying to find the time as much as we can to work on our spiritual growth in whatever way we can, whether we're just doing mantras or uh, meditations together, mm -hmm. or we want to get into the Qigong a little more. It looks really, we were watching a Qigong Kung Fu master the other day doing it, and it was just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Tai Chi, but it was just, it was just beautiful. 
And the and it's a slow movement. Okay, yeah. you're you're moving with the the universe, that consciousness, how it moves. Yeah, um, it was really nice. Uh, make it, really nice feeling to it. Feel the you feel the consciousness of the flow of because there's a certain everybody taps into that that consciousness, and it's like a stream, like a ocean or a body of uh, water, or, a, or it feels like a the air moving and and you can feel it it's like it's a slow moving in the trees they move they are moving they may seem like they're they're stiff but they're but they're adjusting like in yoga how you move just slightly just just slightly yeah and well they move the wind and the earth their, their mass and mass moves at a vibration well everything's alive the wind's alive the uh, the sun Mm -hmm. The energy it feeds our our energy bodies and which is and I just I just love it and you know and I'm not at all a uh, a scholar in any of this and but I, I don't think any of us I is. enjoy just the going out in nature and walking through the trees and it's just you know it's nice feel to the touch wind. the ground and be grounded and just yeah. connect with the earth. Like you guys have are so lucky to have the ocean there, you know, that yeah. just absolutely just that connection, you know. Yeah, I think that's a that's an easy way to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like uh, by just drawing an analogy, right? You know, like to working out. Mm -hmm. I never liked working out. I used to I used to jog and run mini marathons and stuff like that. Yeah. But if I work out, I'd rather play basketball or go swimming because it doesn't feel like a workout even though you work out. But I think uh, about the same uh, notion, uh, you know, you go meditate, you say mantras, you do Qigong, you do Tai Chi, you do yoga. But just to go out and walk uh, takes all the, 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 the thinking out of it, you know? I mean, it just, it, yeah. it, movement, I think the movement is very important. Very important, which is one reason I've never been a, Medi uh, someone that meditated for a long period of time, unless I was moving. Mm -hmm. If I'm walking, then I'm I'm meditating. So quiet walking meditation. And, and some people are like that, where other people they need to be sitting down and listening. Other yeah. people they like. I know if I'm going to get a message from my divine self, or I need to talk to Nancy. So, and I was just talking to Linda about this. I said, I just been really needing to find out what I wanted what Nancy wants to do. So, and the best answers I get when I'm dreaming. So I, every night I would write, I'm gonna have a dream tonight and then get my dream journal. And I do it on my computer, of course. And then, uh, but then, uh, and then I would wait. And then the next morning, if I didn't have a dream, I said, well, I didn't remember that one, but I am going to remember the, the next one. So then sure enough, it does happen. Then you start having lots of dream. I started, at least that's what has worked for me. Yeah. And once I start keeping track of them, then I can have more of them. And, and John was like, yeah, just keep writing it down too. And well, the more importance you make it to your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind is going to pay attention and it's going to allow you to, you have to work with your subconscious mind. Like it's a, you have to teach it. This is important to me. You're writing it down. Mm -hmm. You're emphasizing and it'll get it in the, into the groove of it. It'll start working on making you aware of it and remember it. When we have dreams where we don't remember, we're such in high spiritual states of consciousness. Our, our mind I can't always bring it back to us in memory. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're in a higher world and you just, it's so unrelatable to the, what this right. low density is. You just can't, the mind can't relate to it and bring it back to you yeah. in a sensible fashion. I mean, maybe in another universe or another dimension we're used to light language you know <laughs> you know it doesn't you know or simple language and it's kind of like uh, going back into that other dimension and trying to bring forth that information into a third dimensional plane yeah. and yeah. it's not going to make any sense until you start be able to translate that language into the physical language and it's kind of like going back and trying to interpret Sanskrit, you know, and yeah, but into English or something, you know, and I, I know maybe some of it has been done, but it's like learning another dimension. And I think 
and some of it is uh, definitely detaching from the emotional too, I think, don't you? And uh, when you can detach from some of that emotional part of it where you're not as attached to the person emotionally so you can be able to judge them without buying into that uh, feeling of uh, resentment or that feeling of in a negative way you try to detach and maybe what is it we learned this from Bob Proctor where you respond rather than react instead yeah. of being angry yeah. you are more like you're working with your divine male where the divine male is more like a, a father figure where and is able to have a and I've done that within myself because because I this anger thing is so I can't, I don't like anger and I, I do everything to avoid it. So, and when I start feeling angry, I, I'm like, okay, well, why am I having this, this feeling of being angry? Because, you know, well, well, I should be upset, but how are you going to address it? Well, you have to do it in a more, um, in a more of a, uh, uh, what is the word where you address it rather than you speak to them instead of getting upset, like, like a neighbor that maybe is doing something to your car and they, you don't know why. I mean, it's not like you don't know this person. How could they not like you? So you need to go and talk to them about it, right? Instead of being angry about it, just go and address it. And then maybe then the problem can be taken care of. But, you know, it's kind of like, dang, why didn't, and then once you talk to your neighbor, you're like, oh, dang, why didn't I talk to them? Sooner, because they're a nice person, you know. Right. You know? But yeah. uh, and that divine male is so so loving and so uh, respectful, and so the divine male wants to be is so loving and fatherly. You know what I mean? I love it. So what I found is that the more love and the divine, even though it's, you know, light years beyond us and maturity and intelligence, mm -hmm. it maturity. still responds. It still wants to be loved. Mm -hmm. It wants to be loved. And the more you love on the divinity, because just like God, you know, God, you know, like we're, whenever your analogy of that is, we're the children. It's just like if you have children, you want your children to love and respect you. Well, the divine being up higher and way wiser than us wants the same of us. It wants to be respected and acknowledged. In it. And when you share love with that divinity, it responds in a, in a, in a, in a you know, massive flood of love back to you. It's just like you plant a small seed with it and affection and love towards your divinity. It just seems like whoosh, it just nails you with it because... Yeah. That's what it is. It's unconditional, infinite love. So if you give some of that love back, it just seems like the major, a major stimulus in getting a response. Yeah. And then the, the, the divine is everything external of you, mm -hmm. which makes it pretty easy to figure out. Everything external of you. External? Everything uh -huh. external of you. Everything. In the physical world and the world beyond. Yeah. I mean, it's everything is, is that same substance. Uh, and then I think what you said earlier too about I don't I think what's what maybe uh, we're all learning to do is to internalize everything so experience it internally like the thing with the neighbor you know like what's the message for me you know why am I getting angry mm -hmm. what is it instead of saying what's he doing you know what what's in it for me you know what what am I well, sure. It, it was addressing that respect issue, right? It was addressing, yeah. well, well, does Nancy respect herself? So, you know, yeah. in order for me to do, I have to go and talk to her or, yeah. you know, or talk to him, you know, whoever, you know, but you won't get that respect if you don't address it in yeah. a respectful manner. And um, so, and I think that that's what I'm learning about the divine male. And I think we all have that within ourselves. I think that I have that because I've had to deal with that since 2010. I started to feel that maleness in me, that, that drive, that, that, that force, you know, that male part of me. And 
and I was like, this is, this is all new to me. And, um, and I had to figure out what my, you know, cause I was, all of a sudden I was angry about stuff and I didn't know why I was so angry. Well, I was coming out of that pit hole of self pity, you know, yeah. and, and coming to the point of anger, of being beat up. right. And then once you reach anger, then I guess you get to a higher level of, uh, what's it, you know, and then you get hope and then from hope you keep going higher. You need right? confidence yeah. and move forward. Right. So, but I had to deal with all that and finally get yourself out of the mess you made, you know, and, uh, figure that out for yourself. That's, yeah. that, that's my experience of it anyway. Yeah. And then fine female is, from what I understand that is within all of us is just being able to love on yourself, right? To be able to receive love as well as give love evenly, you know, and expect that back, you mm -hmm. know, to get that even flow of, of love going back and forth. So. But even though we share that as two people, <laughs> you two share it even more than share it as two individual people. I think it's, we learn that as people, but I think we should have that same relationship, that same type of rapport with our higher self. Because by learning it here in our physical relationships and then taking it to our relationship with our divinity, I think it will make the ground very fertile and will make things happen very quickly. And I think with the divine female, I wanted to, uh, I needed to start loving on myself because I was expecting everybody else to. You know, and I guess when I finally realized it wasn't up to them to love me, it was more me that needed to first work with myself because I couldn't understand. I just need to get away from everybody. And, and I felt like that this last week on the, on the 2nd of July. What I need, happened? I needed to get away from everybody just so that. Turn the phone off, turn yeah, the computer turn off, and off. Went, she went into yeah. a black hole. And I, <laughs> I just listened to music. Yeah. And that was it, because I knew that that was where, when I listen to music, I feel better. And I go for a walk, I feel better. And, well, I uh, think there's a lot of that going on right now. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. I talked to a couple of friends, and you just observe things. You know, you can tell. This mm -hmm. uh, eclipse... Evidently, here was a whopper, you know. The mm what? -hmm. It was a whopper. It was a big oh, one. Energy, yeah. yeah. Yes. And uh, and I guess there's a partial coming, a partial mm -hmm. lunar coming. So this has got to be connected somehow. Yes. It's that male female energy. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely, there's definitely <clears throat> been an uptick in the dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For everybody. For everybody to you know to even include what we're observing on the global level you know mm -hmm. uh, it's like uh now the proof is in the pudding yeah. you know the words don't work it's just what's real and what's not real mm -hmm. yeah based on what people do rather than what people say well you know yeah. you get these feelings and you're like well why am i feeling like this you know yeah. Why, why? And you have to ask yourself that. And then you need to just, and I just sat down and I just started writing, just writing whatever came to my mind. And uh, because I felt that that was important to me because I was like, I need to, I need to sit down and just figure this out because I need to talk to, and you know, when you clear the air, like I told John, I smudged and I put salt outside my door and I was like, and I just need to sit down and just, I need to, what is it I need to know? What is it I need to hear? What is it, what is this, what am I being taught here today? What am I, why am I feeling this way? And yeah, and it talks to you. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I need to make a better, and like, like, uh, like you were saying, Todd, we need to start making a, a, a consistent practice of this weekly or else no. it will hit us like this again, you know? Well, do you, do you think that the stuff that you were feeling, do you think it was just personal or do you feel like some of it was collective or was it more, more of one than the other? Well, I think that 
I think we're all a drop in the ocean, right? A drop in the consciousness. I think we all belong to the same consciousness, but we're an individual single, okay, drop, as you might say, or speck. That's, that's my belief. I think we all are individuals, but I think that we are living our own. We're all on this consciousness together. We, we tap into it, but we have a certain, all of us have a certain purpose, but sometimes we have, I think we are drawn to certain people because they tend to have some of the same, yeah. this is what we're wanting to, to live. That's my interpretation of it. But I think that, because you know, there's this, this beautiful flow of energy and we're like, what am I supposed to be doing? And then, because I feel that sometimes, what is her name? The, uh, Dolores Cannon or? Dolores Cannon. Yeah, do you know who she is? She yeah. talks about the first, the second, and the third wave of Indigos. Yeah. Okay. And she says the first wave are the ones that are, are the depressed because they don't really want to be here, but they're here because they have to be. And some of them uh, commit suicide. And then there's the second wave. And God bless them for being here because if it wasn't for the first wave of Indigos, you know, they opened the door. Okay. Right, right. Now, now then the second wave which i think i belong to is the second wave or they're just here to be they don't really have to they're not really they're they're like being an energy like a you're uh, a conduit for the divine yes, to flow into this like world an energy whatever it is wherever they go and i think you're one like a second wave and wherever we go it's kind of like putting that energy to focus to come through okay and I was told from an astrologer, I need to move. And I'm like, well, where am I going to move to? Because where do they need this flow of energy, I guess, right? So or where, where is the flow of energy the strongest, right? Where are you going to go? So so then, um, then there's a third wave, which are the ones that are really putting to work. Like these, like this young man, he's, he lives, he's in Norway and he's, uh, cleaning up the oceans and he's put all that together. I mean, he's like really working hard to, to do all this kind of stuff and, and young men that are using whatever that chi energy to move uh, things or to, you know, you know, what else did, how else did they build the pyramids? You know, we're going to find that out. Right. And um, so it's just, uh, they're the ones that are really working to get all that, the earth cleaned up and the conscious. Yeah. They're coming in with a real strong light yeah. in them. Yeah. yeah. Newer, yeah. new uh, groups. Yeah, because they understand it so much better than we do. Oh, and yeah. The younger group of people. I mean, they're like amazing. Like my daughter's in that group. I'm pretty sure your kids are in that group. Of uh, Your son is definitely, he's a. He's an introverted. Oh, my God. Uh, what do you call it? John's. Introverted. Uh, you know, you got a eccentric word. genius. <laughs> and he you know, studied every book on the mystical and the paranormal. Yeah. Oh my God! I thought I I thought I was well studied. Yeah, he put me to shame. Yeah. he's like a young wizard walking he's the path absolutely amazing. to divinity. Yeah, what the information that he he knows, you know. Now I don't know if he has the um, experience to back up all that, but once he does have the experience to back up all, we'll say get wisdom. Amazing. Yeah, wisdom with all that. He's going to be absolutely amazing. So. What? Well, it seems like, but you know, I said it because it seems like some people, and I'm just looking at the last few days, particularly some women that I kind of see what they write because I share a lot of stuff to the Soldier Group. Mm -hmm. But I noticed they were all kind of saying the same thing, mm -hmm. which uh, was they were digging deep. Uh, it was intense, mm -hmm. a lot of solitude. Yes. Uh, but also, the phoenix was rising. You know, the fire, the fire was rising. The fire was, was, was coming out. It was expanding. Yeah. Well, that think, to me tells me that if the phoenix is rising, you're finally deciding what you're going to tolerate and not tolerate. And you're going to, you're starting to put um, uh, not borders or boundaries. You're going to, you're going to like, okay. I don't want this, I don't want that, but I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. And you're you're making decisions. Spiritual like standards yes. and guidelines right. on what's, what kind of bullshit yeah, you're, you're put up with in this stuff. world. You're purging. What you're gonna do to purging. grow. Mm -hmm. Purging, yeah. Yeah. good word, mm -hmm. purging. We all have a lot of that to do, that's yeah. for sure. That's, yeah. a, that's a good, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And I think, again, it's an internalization thing. Mm -hmm. It seems to be where we're all headed with it because, uh, you know, the externalization of it, it's, uh, that's where you get into these boundaries. And, you know, people have been talking on the show for the last couple of weeks about, you know, when you have that balance and alignment, mm -hmm. your field speaks for itself. You don't need to set a boundary. It absolutely it's, does. It's set for you, yeah. When you walk into a room, I mean, it's not a thing about ego or anything else like that. They'll just feel your energy or somebody that, like that walks in, you, you feel like a spiritual master or somebody like that, spiritual development. Well, you need to decide what kind of energy you want to introduce their en to. Their energy impacts mm -hmm. wherever they go. Yeah. And that's where we all need to strive for, mm -hmm. where we can impact this world and make it something beautiful and incredible. You know, the more... Once we hit a critical mass of consciousness, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we're all doing that individually and collectively it's joining together. And it's like the hundredth monkey syndrome, you know, yeah. if you okay. consciously get so far, it's going to be, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. Quite a few people think we've hit the tipping point now. Hit the what? I, mean, I hope so. I'm, that sounds few, wonderful. Quite a few people think we've hit the tipping point now. Um, yeah. You know, Who's well, break? Good. No, I was just going to say, and you know, and it's it's kind of hard to tell because it's just like that uh, higher dimensional information coming in because it's not coming in in a human language. But if you look at just the different things that are happening, are they coincidences? Mm -hmm. Are they are they synchronicities? Are they signs that we're in alignment, further alignment? I just read a a, a quote here from Jenny Smith. She's always putting up quotes. I actually saw this the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, can't find it now but it was from laura eisenhower she was talking about this lunar eclipse this partial mm -hmm. lunar eclipse that's coming up next there's enough energy potentially in it to bring down the cabal all together now i'm not trying to get into that type of conversation but, I, but if you look at if you, yeah. but if you look at the earth if you look at the earthquakes you look at the and there's been a lot of them around the world they just the ones in california have been more pronounced mm -hmm. um and, and just the different things that are happening uh, it only makes sense that the external would reflect the internal growth that we've had. Well, the cabal is crumbling. There's a lot of things behind the scenes that are going on that we, can, we can't be told everything because it's a lot of covert activity going on, but it's, it's happening. And I think, too, that when Jen, or when you're, I love following um, uh, Eisenhower. She is absolutely, I respect her in so many ways. I mean, the the information that she has is just absolutely so yeah. right on. Okay, and she's yeah. an astrologer as well. And I, I love her. I, I'm so, I think that the energy that we have coming through is because everybody decided, you know, this is a personal energy. And I think it's something that I need to work on within myself. And, and I think that if we all do that little part, we're all part of the ocean. We're all little drops our specs in the universe, if we all take care of this uh, vehicle that we came with and what is coming through, if we are to work through those problems and that, and just that, and setting those uh, boundaries and picking out what we want in our life, then just think how peaceful everybody, I mean, if everybody worked on themselves, I think that uh, that would make a big, I mean, what, Pam, what a, what a punch, okay, to that energy, right? That, that would do it. Yeah. That would that would that would seem to be the only way to do it. Mm -hmm. As within, without, mm -hmm. below, above. Yeah. And I think the more of us that walk in a the highest state of unconditional love, mm -hmm. it brings that power level, that wattage up to an extreme level. And if enough of us do that in a collective consciousness, mm -hmm. it's going to be like a tidal wave mm -hmm. of powerful spiritual force that will, will just destroy everything negative in this world yeah because it's kind of like we're saying like i i am so sick of this bullshit mm -hmm. you know? yeah. that's and the most, phoenix that's the phoenix yeah, right yeah you just like i don't what just what do i want and there's a lot yeah. of people like that even that don't understand anything metaphysical or anything yeah. a lot of people are getting to that point yeah well that's that phoenix rising Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really about the experience itself. It's really that's why I say I think a lot. Of, I think a lot of what's going on mm -hmm. the last few days has been a, uh, a, 
a very collective thing. You know, I don't think people are as stupid as the powerless powers that be think they are. You know, I don't think anything really needs to be held back. Why? Why would anything need to be held back? Is it going to fry our brains? I don't think so. They you use know? it's our hearts. Right? They use the bullshit that yeah. they hear from the think tanks that says, "Well, we're not ready for it." Well, they own the thing. They, they own the thing. Have tanks. a clue what we're ready for. They own the think tanks. Yeah, they yeah. Own the think tanks. They own it. They they did so, anyway. So that's all so, kind of going away now. When are you guys coming back to Hawaii? Next nice week. <laughs> are you? Uh, yeah. No, it's not gonna be that soon. I don't know. But well, you guys are gonna be in Florida, right? In January. In January, yeah. We're in Florida. Uh, I think uh, so it was good. Sarasota. Sarasota. Fiesta Key Beach. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that's uh, it's yeah. beautiful there. Especially that time of year. So. You doing yeah, like conferences there or something? Yeah, we're gonna do a workshop and a couple of keynotes uh, addresses. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We mm -hmm. really are. Yeah. What kind of events going on down there that you're at? Going to? It's, it's called. Uh, oh my God, conscious conscious conference. It's by wavesoflight.org. dot uh, org. Monica D. Binware and Waves uh, of Life. Uh, what did I say? Conscious Wa ways of light. Waves of light. Waves of light dot com. dot org. Waves of light dot org. And. Uh, yeah, there's uh, six or seven, eight other speakers, and there's going to be workshops the 17th, 18th, and 19th of January. So, yeah. another vacation period. Yeah, we've already had like four people uh, make you know buy their tickets or whatever through Sology that I that I know of. So, I think it ought to be a pretty good turnout. You guys ought to head down there. It's not too far from you, <laughs> especially since you're a road warrior. And that's in January. We'll have to figure. We'll figure it out. You say seventeenth through eighteenth and nineteenth. Seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth. Yeah. It's on uh, your uh, your astrology page. Mm, no, but if you go to wavesoflight.org, uh, it's it'll it'll pop up. It's, it's, yeah, wavesoflight.org. Yeah, wavesoflight.org. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing y'all again, either on camera or in person or both. Okay. Appreciate y'all sitting down with us today. I'm happy for you. Y'all look great. Thank you. You look fantastic. Thank you again for everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I look forward. I look forward to it. Yeah. It was like hanging out with family in Hawaii. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, you, and the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> they well, like tell, it. tell Morgan we said hello and send her love. I'll tell her. I'll see you. Take care, brother. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.